It's 2008. The housing market is dead in the water. Sales of your mum's mascara are at an all-time high, and motion controls are out of zenith. Thanks to Nintendo, what was once thought to be a gimmick is now an extremely successful gimmick. <laughs> And, two years on from the Wii's release, Mario & Co are raking in the money. By this point in time, the Wii had sold more than 30 million units, and by god, the world was loving it. Um... Seven years old, you love the fact that none of these games take any skill. Seventy years old, while you be the hit of the retirement community with this thing, 85 year old World War II veteran, we'll just boot up this game and you two can relive your memories of killing Japanese people on the Nintendo Wii. Psst, just tell grandpa it's from Korea. The company even followed up their success with more useless plastic crap people spent money on, which meant that the boys over at Kyoto could drown in even more yen. However, over at Sony, a green-eyed monster was lurking. And it wasn't Crash Bandicoot either, because the series was pretty much dead come 2008. Instead, it was something far, far worse. Jealousy. Sony looked at Nintendo, with their glistening motion controls making them the better of the ball, and looked back at their own creation, the PS3, a device so expensive it required the sale of a kidney. Due to the inclusion of a ludicrous amount of technology, technology. the console had launched at a price of 499 US dollars. In fact, to this day, economists describe such a price tag as way too bloody much. Additionally, the console is also hampered by the lack of games available during launch. Have you seen this game? Since many big name titles were delayed. Combined, these two factors effectively kneecapped the console the moment it got running. Now, admittedly, the PS3 wasn't doing that badly come 08. In an attempt to claw its way back to the top, Sony had slashed the price of the console and got to work on actually producing games. By this point in time, the PS3 could boast titles such as Uncharted, Metal Gear Solid 4, and Little Big Planet that lifted the George Foreman grill up to third place in the console wars. Behind the Wii and 360, of course, but massively ahead of Zebo. <coughs> Sony, however, thought the PS3 could do even better, and they decided to call up an old friend of theirs. Hello, who is this? It's Sony. I'm not interested. I was out after that debacle back in 03. Come on, lad. One last do uh, With your help, we could really... move these units. Alright. Fine then. I'll see you tomorrow. I knew you'd come around. You always did have an... eye for a deal. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Is, is this thing on? Oh no! Oh no! Now, Sony did have some experience with motion controls from their work on the iToy, a PS2 attachment that acted as a way to interact with video games without a controller. Instead, all you'd need were your god-given hands. The good news is that the games for the device worked. The bad news is that when I was writing the script, I forgot to put the word games in quotation marks. They weren't that good. However, Sony wasn't out yet. I didn't hear no bell. And decided to release the successor to the iToy for the seventh gen of consoles. Suffering from a chronic lack of originality, they called it the PlayStation Eye. However, despite featuring two times the sensitivity of its older sibling, very few games supported the Eye. Right, and right those there. that did used it to take pictures. Say cheese. Not even the extremely boastful promise of reasonable quality video by Sony could boost sales figures, but the company wasn't going to quit that easily. No! No! I can do this! Because they saw the advances in motion technology they had made with the eye and the eye toy and decided to mash the two together with a fancy sounding sensor and a German stick grenade to create their very own motion control system. Ready? Let's begin. So work began in the PlayStation Move, with the project codenamed YCON. There were many theories as to why this name was chosen, the most popular being that Sony engineers would continuously ask the higher-ups, why the hell are we doing this? But in all actuality, the truth is that there were three teams working on the project, and the letter Y looks like three lines coming together. The design process went smoothly, some kinks are ironed out, and a few nonsense ideas, such as using a DualShock as an additional controller, are tossed. Soon, around comes E3, and Sony are ready to show the whole world their revolutionary controller. The presentation is... alright. You get the usual fear of virtual vandalism, horrible aim, and man struggling to write his name. Bars! Bars! But the crowd's reaction tells it all. Or at least it would, the music drowned it out after like two seconds. Thank you. 
While the hardware and engineering teams were busy at work, another group was trying to come up with a name. Even at E3, Sony didn't actually have an official name for their motion controller. Many in the press simply called it Magic Wand, or just Wand. Proving to the world that you did not have to be creative at all to be a games journalist. Full of the exaggerated swagger of a black team. At Sony proper, a few names are also being thrown around the company. Okay, okay. What about Sphere? You know, the thing at the top. Oh. <gasps> what, what, what a gem! Even Ark is considered, due to the resemblance the controller's glowing orb has of a Tesla coil. It would later turn out that the designers had forgotten to go to Specsavers on the day they came up with that one. Ark would eventually prevail as the official name of the controller, with a trademark being submitted for the name on March the 1st. However, one week later, and Sony realized that such a name could conflict with Microsoft's Ark brand PC accessories. And while a console war was A-OK -okay with the company, an actual legal battle Objection! was out of the question. Mm. Two days later, Sony decided to just call the thing the PlayStation Move. Get it? Because people move when playing it? Uh, uh. In fact, you can still see remnants of the Ark name with the Moves logo, which lends to my personal theory that someone at the graphic design team must have been asleep when fucking made the change. And soon after, advertising material began to be produced for the new motion controller. The most famous one is this commercial, which points out that unlike the puny Wii, with its family-friendly titles and highly polished, childhood nostalgia-inducing games, the PlayStation Move would go above and beyond in the world of motion controls. It would do everything. Shoot a bow, play table tennis, be a country club member, even engage in fake murder, the move could do it all. And as the release date draws closer and closer, Sony take even greater care to explain to the gaming press that their device isn't just a knockoff Wii. For example, the design, totally different, the Wii is just a remote. The move is far more. The move is a baseball bat. A tennis racket. Welcome to hell, old man. A sword. Hell, even a gun. But not for me! The resemblance is uncanny. Sony even boasts that some doctors believe that the move could even be used to simulate surgery. Wait, what the fuck? Alright, Nick. Don't panic. Think back to med school. Around comes launch day. It's September the 15th. September the 16th. September the 17th. October the 21st. Let's have a look at the deals. For $100, you get the controller bundled with the eye camera and the game, Sports Champions. For $400, you get all that plus a full on PS3. Those might sound like good prices. Hey. But keep those numbers saved. We're gonna need them for later. There is a minor issue with people not using the included wrist straps. It can fly off. With predictable results. And do this. But the video shown also happens to be an isolated issue. Mostly. So I guess in that regard, the move is different from the Wii and its television seeking remote. But that's about it really, because just like its brother in white, the move also comes with plenty of useless plastic crap to clog up your living room. Let's have a look, shall we? Guns, shooting, killing, fun for all the family. And now the extremely catchy and easy to say pronunciation guy. PlayStation Move shooting attachment. You can bring the fun of being an American straight to your living room. That's right. You got it. For the low, low price of 20 US dollars, approximately 5 billion Australian, Sony would sell you their very own shooting attachment because apparently gun was taken. The reaction was actually pretty good. Many a mum's basement dwelling amateur reviewer gave their take on the piece of motor plastic. 2D, or if you have 3D glasses like me, in 3D, even though I don't own a 3D TV. Still. <laughs> so. Although some more legitimate reviewers had some gripes. Most notably with the trigger mechanism, a byproduct of the attachment just being an overly complicated way to activate a button. But hey, for $20, you get something that not only resembles a gun, but comes with the added bonus of sort of resembling a gun. But what if you wanted more? Are you a hardcore gamer? Well, then get ready for the PlayStation Move Sharpshooter. For only $40, you get a position gaming. What a fucking name. The instrument designed for hardcore games like Killzone 3, Operation Killzone, and Cellcom 4. Those that stand for seriously amazing child obliterating machine. 
Super Mario Galaxy? Yeah, sure, if you're like five, the real hardcore ten-year-old gamers use a real hardcore attachment. Look here! Look here! For the hardcore... I'm on open mind again! ...move to play real hardcore games. Fuck you! I hope your whole family has a nice Christmas! It even came with a stock, a position-made attachment designed to really help minimize the heavy recoil of simulated 5-5-6 rounds that the spaghetti arms of hardcore gamers just couldn't deal with. But in all seriousness, it actually does look pretty good. And what do you know? It was actually received quite well. Although, when you think about it, the whole object is just these Wii add-ons with slightly faded plastic. But let's say that you don't want to shoot people. Nick Jason, not my fan! Instead, you want to do something far more peaceful and safe, such as, hmm, drive a car. Racing. Races. NASCAR, F1, WRC, Le Mans, MotoGP, Bogan, Superbikes, F2, DTM, IndyCar, Rallycross. Who doesn't want to go racing? Boogity, boogity, boogity! Now, you could just use a puny PS3 controller to move your car, but to race properly, you need a wheel. And the PlayStation Move racing wheel is just what you need. Pedal shifters, handlebar throttles, <laughs> double the accuracy of a DualShock, all for the low, low price of 40 Freedom Box. The boys over at r slash sim racing were surely melting down over this revelation. Why spend thousands of dollars on virginity protecting hardware when you can have it all for a fraction of the cost and still get laid? Reaction to the wheel itself was alright. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of hot. Although a key point of criticism was directed at the fact the wheel isn't really a wheel. It's just a motorbike's handlebars that happen to have pedal shifters on them. GameSpot even found out that the wheel was compatible with any PS3 game. But why would that even be a surprise? It's just a PS3 controller that's been stretched out with a hole cut in the middle. If you're noticing a theme here, then you're correct. The add-ons for the PlayStation Move do seem heavily geared toward masculine interests. <laughs> which stands as a direct contrast to the software available for the device on launch. Cyber! Most of them are games tailored exclusively for the casual market. Grandma will love this one. My girlfriend's mates want to play this when they come over. Hey, sports! I don't know that. Just these, thanks. Yeah, if you couldn't tell. I'm a bit of a gamer. In addition to the lowest common denominator type niche Sony is attempting to hit, the games just aren't that good. Um... Sports champions are different from free sports. Start the party, start the plagiarism detector more like, Kung Fu Rider, uh, original, I guess, but also pretty rubbish. iPad Move Edition, wait, this is just a game from a year ago with Move slapped in the title. Okay, Tumble. Surely, okay, surely, surely this game is going to be the killer app for the Move. Ready to make your first tower. Pick up another block and using the drop zone to help you, place it on top of the first one. If that selection of games wasn't enough to dishearten you, then keep in mind, that wasn't just a selection. That was the whole bloody buffet. Those five games I just showed you were the only real launch titles available for the PlayStation Move. There were a few more already out that were patched to support the Move on launch day. Admittedly, there was less choice in the English menu of a Chinese restaurant. Catch eight! Just skip the lemon chicken to my low. And anyways, most of them were better off with a controller. Hey! Or in the case of Ruse, with a mouse and keyboard. I'm pressing five and it's slow! To make things worse, ah! remember when I said that the move cost $100 by itself and $400 with a PS3? Well, by 2010, the Wii was selling for $200. <gasps> oh my gosh, there's a sale! In and had the added advantage of around four years of prep. So while Nintendo was pumping out Super Mario Galaxy 2, the best Sony could muster was Toy Story 3, a multi-platform game that wasn't even made for the move. What the hell is that? But instead had motion compatibility jammed into it a few months after release. To summarize, the games that supported the controller oftentimes played better without it, and the games that required it just weren't worth playing at all. By the end of the year, Sony could boast 4.1 million sales of the move. But there's a catch. See, that number doesn't actually refer to the moves that were bought by consumers. Instead, it's the amount shipped to retailers, meaning that it's entirely possible that the actual sales figures were only a fraction of that 4 million number. Obviously, there's no real way to verify the exact number of units sold. The numbers! 
What are they saying? But even if each and every move shipped between September and December was sold to consumers, Sony was still facing stiff competition. Not only did the Wii completely blow the move out of the water in its first quarter, Microsoft's Kinect was also selling well, with Master Chief and his gang selling 2.5 million Just Dance machines in the first month. With that number of phone to units that were actually sold, instead of Sony's, not actually a sale, sales figures. Facing heavy competition from multiple tech giants and boasting an uninspiring catalogue of copy-pasted shovelware, a lesser-known company would be forgiven for throwing in the towel and focusing on their actual console. Oh no! Anyway, last week... However, Sony, the same company that gave us this... <laughs> and this... I don't even know where Grimsby is! Pardon? And this... Hey, hey, hey! Have you ever heard of Dustball Kid? ...is by no means a lesser company. And we're not gonna give up that easily. <laughs> Well, in all actuality, they were. A scant 19 PlayStation Move-only games were ever released, none of which are that memorable. Although sports champions did get a sequel, so it must have done something right. And while some games tried to rally the move to go... Once more into the breach, dear friend! ...it wasn't enough. <laughs> the final PS3 game that supported motion controls, Rambo the video game, is best known for having a very funny Metacritic. In total, the move shipped around 15 million units by 2012, which isn't completely awful. In fact, those sales statistics managed to take Sony up to rank 3 on the motion control leaderboard. Unfortunately, this time there was no Zebo to spare Sony's blushes. And in an interview taken in 2012, Sony UK's vice president admitted that they screwed up. The move's titles are far too casual, far too few, and far too mediocre. Again. By this point, motion controls were no longer hip with the kids. Instead, shockingly, good gameplay, story, and graphics seemed to be the best ways to sell video games. It was time to shut it down. Or was it? It's 2016. Trump is riding 4 chan of victory. Dabbing is considered the hot courtier of internet culture. Pokemon go to the polls! And VR hype is out at Zenith. Oh. Thanks to Oculus and Valve, what was once thought to be an expensive gimmick, the sole domain of fighter pilots is now a somewhat affordable, slightly mainstream gimmick. Sony looked on, and just like motion controls 8 years ago, they wanted in. They could develop the VR headset on their own, but for the controllers? Well, they could obviously develop new ones on their own, but that would take time and money. No. Oh, come on! And why do that, when you could just call an old friend? God damn it. What is it now, Sony? Sony had planned it all along. Six years on from the release of the move, one engineer at the company claimed that the move was effectively a VR wand disguised as a motion controller. Now, either Sony was playing an incredible game of 10D chess for eight whole years, or they were telling some serious porkies. Check me. Check me. Check me. Dang. I'm gonna go with door one. Sony, I've misjudged you. 15 million units shipped, three pieces of useless plastic, countless releases of pure shovelware, all of that was just prep work for the PlayStation VR. Outstanding move. And so the PlayStation Move still technically exists today. Admittedly, it's still very much a gimmick, only this time used to complement a slightly more impressive gimmick. But hey, at least you can buy them in a shop. Well, kinda. The move was not a complete failure. With the backing of Sony, how could it be? Unlike the face plan to the Ouya or the slowly draining Wii U, the Move was a remarkably solid product. In fact, it actually had better technology than the Wii. Yeah, this is big brain time. And used some very advanced accelerometers and angular rate sensors that I'm sure made Sony salesmen sound very smart. But therein lies the problem. All throughout its development, all throughout its life, all throughout this video, the Move was continuously compared to the Wii. This is brilliant. But I like this. And that may have been its downfall. That's my the Wii is immortalized as an icon of gaming, while the Kinect will be forever remembered as a joke, the class clown, the punching bag of the gaming industry. But the move? They say that good artists borrow. Can I borrow a feeling? <laughs> and great artists steal. Robbery! That imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. After all, What's the difference between Manet and Monet? Between Halo and Splitgate? Between Joyce and the crack addict standing outside my flat? Oh, you got any fucking diaries on your cat? Between the Wii and the Move. Truly, what is the difference?
Well, for one, Mayonnaise didn't just make low-effort chicken scratchings. You're ready to make your first tower. 